Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, APW Sports signing in. And today I'm going to do something a little bit different. We have the money in the bank bill almost at its conclusion. We just had go home episode of Monday Night Raw. And I thought this is the perfect time to drop my story of the time that I went to Money in the Bank in 2011 in Chicago for the famous CM Punk versus John Cena WWE Championship match. And it's one thing to be in a building for an event like that, but it's also another thing that was my first WWE live show that I was in, in person, was the Money in the Bank pay-per-view in Chicago for the whole entire thing. And from my experience, not only just the match, the environment was just so much fun. We had a lot of things go on. I'm gonna get deeper into details about the things that I was experiencing for my first time at any wrestling live event, whether it was just a pay-per-view show, Monday Night Raw show, SmackDown show. It was my my very 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 first time at any wrestling live event and it is crazy now that it's been what 13 years that's crazy it's been 13 years that's also showing my age a little bit as i just passed my 33rd birthday in 2011 i was barely scratching the surface of adulthood i was only at the time i believe i was only 20 years old so let me see. Yeah, I, I, I was just only 20 years old. So at that point, I'm still young and it was an experience to say the least to be there in the building. I had a great time and another reason I decided to do this was that CM Punk doing his promo on SmackDown before the Drew McIntyre attack ended up mentioning the, that exact night in his promo of 2011 pay-per-view and money in the bank where he beat John Cena for the title. If I can handle the pressure, I'm gonna give you a date. You let me know by raise a hand or scream a voice how many people were here July 17th, 2011. I promised myself and I promised each and every single one of you I was gonna walk out of my hometown the WWE champion. That's pressure. I could have slipped on a banana peel, fell flat on my face, and made an embarrassment of myself, and made an embarrassment of Chicago. But did I do that? No. Did I do that? No. One more time. Did I embarrass Chicago? No. The experience of going through the whole bill with the CM Punk pipe bomb, famous promo that was legendary in itself. And to know that I was going to be in the building for the actual match was something insane. And then on top of that, we had other matches, of course. We had the Money in the Bank World matter ladder match. We had the SmackDown Money in the Bank ladder match. And this was before they brought the women's money in the bank ladder match so they had the brand split at the time still as they have now with the raw and the smackdown it wasn't just one women's one men's like it is today they actually had it for two different brands which was the raw and the smackdown pay-per-view we also had the world heavyweight championship match between christian and randy orton and we had a Divas Championship match. This is showing a little bit how old this was and how old I am. And it was called the WWE's Divas Championship. It wasn't the Women's World Championship. It wasn't just the Women's Championship. This was back when, uh, let's just be honest, the Divas era, to me, at least to me, wasn't necessarily the greatest. And this will show a little bit in my story. And they actually had a dark match. This was Santino Morello and Vladimir Kozlov versus the new Nexus. This was the this was so long ago. They had a Nexus with Otonga and Michael McGillicuddy, aka Curtis Axel. That was the dark match. Now I will be a hundred percent honest. I don't remember too much about this dark match other than it was just a match that happened. I remember it happening, but I don't remember too much about it. Now, we had the Daniel Bryan actually winning the SmackDown Women's, SmackDown ladder, I said SmackDown Women's, Lord Jesus. SmackDown Money in the Bank ladder match, and it was for the World Heavyweight Championship as the World Heavyweight Championship at that particular point in time in history was on the brand of SmackDown. 
We even had Wade Barrett, a young Cody Rose. This was the legacy era of Cody Rose. This is not the Cody Rose that we got now. This was before the American Nightmare Cody Rose. Heath Slater, Justin Gabriel, Kane, Sheamus, and Sin Cara. Now, the one thing that stood out about this match was the Sheamus putting Sin Cara through a ladder, and we had Sin Cara basically on the ground, kind of shivering and kind of shaking. I don't know if felt. It was just like like a seizure, almost like moment. He ended up being taken out on a stretcher. Now, being there for that was just for that little spot in that scene was just crazy. Um, it was one of those things where you see it in person. It means so much different than seeing it on live TV. And the way that that match was set up, it was a beautiful match. It was a very good match. And I think at the time, Daniel Bryan was the guy that, before the whole yes movement, that he was still a very good competitor, very good wrestler. So that was a good match. Now, the Divas Championship match, it was between Kelly Kelly with Eve Torres at a side versus the Bella Twins, Brie Bella. And Nikki got that sad. And I'm going to be 100% honest with you. This match was boo-boo. The women at this point, I think at this time, was just... A lot of it wasn't what it is today when you have people like a Mercedes Monet, a.k.a. Sasha Banks, so Be Becky Lynch, or Bailey or Rhea Ripley, or Liv Morgan, or Selena Vega, or women of that nature, Nia Jax. You didn't have those same women, I think, of wrestling ability at that time. And to be honest... <laughs> For most people in the arena in that night, it was a bathroom break, I will be honest. I saw a lot of the match from a TV screen because, honestly, I had to go to the bathroom too. <laughs> so, it was more of a bathroom break for me. Bell ended up, well, Brie Bell ended up losing to Kelly Kelly, and the match wasn't really a very long match. It was just one of those, we got to throw one in there to give the women some love at that time. It was just different era in women's wrestling, and to be honest, I'm so glad this came so far because women wrestling then was just fun. So it is what it is, but the next match was the Mark Henry versus the Big Show. Another match that it wasn't necessarily great, but it told a story with Mark Henry. He was on that Hall of Pain run where he ended up capturing the World Heavyweight Championship. And I cannot remember off the top of my brain was that after this match, but he ended up capturing the World Championship in this run. So I think it was the height of Mark Henry. It was the peak, I want to say, of his career where he was just on a dominant train. And then on top of that, after the match, he ended up having a chair in between Big Show's leg and he ended up basically snapping his leg. And it just told the story of Mark Henry was willing to do anything and Mark Henry was on that run of that trajectory where he was that mega heel where he was just being a dominant force in the WWE. And then we had the Money in the Bank Rawls matter ladder match. It was... Alberto Del Rio coming out with the victory with Rey Mysterio, Alex Rowley, Evan Bourne, Jack Swagger, Kofi The Miz, and R-Truth. Another very good match, and it was one of those runs with Alberto Del Rio where they pushed him heavy. Now, talk about a wrestler with no aura. Alberto Del Rio was that guy, even at this point. Like, you have heels that you like, you have heels that you root for. Alberto Del Rio was just... And eh, to me, he wasn't really that great to me. This was another good matter match. It had a couple of spots. Now, Jack Swagger, that, that he was funny. Kofi Kingston and the Miz with the Alex Riley situation, our truth. It was just a very, very good match. I was personally rooting for Kofi at the time and or Rey Mysterio to finally get a shot at a WWE Championship which he ended up winning later, but at the end of the day, I was not rooting for Alberto Del Rio. Now we have, I mean, the Christian and the Randy Orton match, it was a very, very good build, in my opinion. Christian with the whole, he had one more match, one more shot, and he ended up winning due to the, the stipulation that if Randy Orton got disqualified, he would end up losing the title, and it was a low blow after Christian spit on Randy Orton, and the arena during that match, uh, Mainly in the after parts of the match where Christian basically got RKO, I want to remember twice on the announce table. It was electrifying part of the night. One of those matches where you just knew that it was just going to find a way for Randy Orton to get disqualified. Watching it live in the building 
was just a totally different or the thing about this match it wasn't necessarily a lot of rooting interest of the night because of course we had the cm punk and cena match but at the end of the day that was just one of those matches where it was still a very good show it was on christian's run as he was finally looking for that world heavyweight championship that kind of escaped him throughout the course of his career and then we had the edge that i want to if i remember right it was the same year that edge had had to call it a career because of the neck injury it was one of those things where christian wanted that opportunity too and that was a lot of the bill but for the main event was the cena versus cm punk match now this is the part of the night that stands out in my brain the absolute most because we all know it was the biggest part of the night cm punk being a guy that's from chicago and i'm a chicago guy myself so that's run rooting interest john cena being the big star at the time big wwe champion at that time and the stipulation of this match because of the whole cm punk contract situation the whole pipe bomb situation whole vince mcmahon was trying to offer him a contract before the actual match and the stipulation was if john cena had lost this match he was fired now i want to start off a little bit of the interest because this was the last interest before CM Punk ended up switching his theme song to Cult of Personality. This was still the Fire Burns theme that CM Punk was using at that time. So this very night was the very last night that CM Punk actually used that as his theme song. The arena for CM Punk was it, we all, it was almost we blew the roof off of that place because everybody was so in the interest of CM Punk. It was so many, if Punk loses, we riot signs. It was so many CM Punk different variations of signs in the building that night. And I have a funny story to tell about that. It was, I think it was a couple sitting, I can't remember how many rows in front of, it was me and my brother at the time, I forgot to mention that, that it was actually me and my older brother that actually went to this. It was a funny story that it was a couple that was sitting in front of us, a, he was rooting for CM Punk, and she was rooting for John Cena. I don't know if this is their date night or whatever, but it was funny because <laughs> she was like, if CM Punk wins, you ain't getting none, and we all know what that means. If CM Punk wins, you ain't getting none. And the first thing I look at, I look at my brother, and I'm looking around. We all trying not to laugh. <laughs> And we looked at him like, well, you might want to switch that around, sir. <laughs> it was just funny that she really said that to him out loud. And everybody around in the seating area heard it. It was absolutely hilarious. But the interest for CM Punk was absolutely legendary. The crowd really just exploded. The crowd was on his feet. The crowd was cheering so loud. I was one of them. It was just an aura of the night when CM Punk walked in that building. He came out through the entrance ramp. It was just like the house was basically torn down. Basically, when he came out, sat in the middle of the ring, even had tears in his ass during that point. And it was just one of those moments where you really had to be in the building to experience something of that nature, something that was electrifying and loud. It was almost loud like if the Bears had won a Super Bowl. It was loud like if the Bulls had won an NBA championship, the White Sox had won a World Series. It was loud in that building. And it was another thing that they, I think at this era, they didn't do the announcements after the wrestlers had made the entrances in the ring like they do nowadays, especially for championship matches where the ring announcer will announce them. Well, Samantha Erden now would announce them after the wrestler made those entrances. This was the era where they were still announcing them regularly as they came out. And one thing I can remember when CM Punk came out, it was loud. And when John Cena came out, that arena was so loud with booze. Of course, the TV audio was not going to capture the audio as good as it would as if you were in person. But from my experience and my standpoint, when John Cena came out, that arena got so freaking loud with booze. And I mean loud that it basically 
if you had to be in the arena, it drowned out. I cannot remember if it was Tony Chimmel or Justin Roberts announcing at that time. The arena got so loud with booze, you did not even hear them announcing John Cena. And you could tell the Cena had a different aura that night as he didn't usually make that, usually run to the ring entrance. It was so different that night because of the stipulations, because of what was on the line, and also because of the whole Chicago aura. But that match, I believe it is one of the greatest matches in WWE history. You have the Shawn Michaels Undertaker match at WrestleMania 25. Then on the top of my head, you had Undertaker, Triple H, Hell in a Cell. You had this past year's Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns WrestleMania match. And you had Stone Cold versus The Rock at WrestleMania 17. You had a couple of different matches where the match was just off the charts great. And it was so much of a blessing and so much of an experience to be in a building for that match. It was so back and forth with Cena hitting the AA, Cena and STF. It was CM Punk and the Anaconda Vice, which I had, well, he hasn't wrestled in a while, so I haven't seen him really use it that much. And then he had to go to sleep. She had so many offensive moves for both guys in each side, each of the match. And it got crazy because you know when you have those spots with a yeah and a boo moments where they're punching and the whole CM Punk Cena sucks chants were loud. They were loud. Of course you had your stippling that was still rooting for Cena because he was one of the biggest names in the company at that time. The arena and the environment was such a great environment for a match like this, for CM Punk to be in his hometown, to be going for the WWE Championship for the first time and not only for him to win it, but to win it in his hometown of Chicago, where at midnight that night, the contract was set to expire and he was gonna walk away from the WWE as WWE champion. And he did just that. And when I tell you, when CM Punk hit that one, two, three, that crowd just absolutely exploded. Of course, you had the part where John Laurinaitis and Vince McMahon was trying to do the whole screw job and that didn't work because Cena stopped it before it could happen. Then after the match, he called for Alberto Del Rio to come out and try to cash his money in the bank, and that was basically nicked in the bud. It was so many angles of this match, whether you had to see him Punk getting fired, well, excuse to see him Punk leaving WWE with the championship, Cena getting fired, and you had the Alberto Del Rio potential cash in after the CM Punk win, you had Vince trying to do everything in his power to have Cena to win that match. The environment of this match was absolutely nuts and crazy. And one thing that the TV cameras didn't capture, because I ended up going back and watching this recently, and one thing that the TV audience did not see, the TV cameras did not capture, was us as an entire audience went to sing na 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 hey hey goodbye to Vince as CM Punk was crawling through the crowd celebrating his WWE Championship win and I have to say I also went to another pay-per-view in itself payback and that was 2013 I believe I had went to that that was the last one I went to which is crazy but for that to be my first ever pay-per-view to experience first ever live event and to experience something like that it was an absolute treasure. It was an absolute treat. And I just felt this was the very time to tell the story of me being in the building for that match. And honestly, we were waiting a little bit after the match to see if something else happened and if anything else was going to happen when CM Punk was in the crowd celebrating it. And then Vince's face just looked absolutely disgusted. And the crowd was just absolutely crazy. And the one thing, it, it was just... A great night but I was there for 2011 money in the bank CM Punk Cena WWE Championship match and the one that CM Punk had mentioned on the Smackdown promo I was there in the building but that's my story and I will catch you guys in the next one peace